Hello, it's Keith here, and this is lesson 37 of the platform specific series of my 65 Vector Assembly programming tutorials. Today, we're going to be looking at the BBC and the CRTC on that system. Now, this is basically a remake of a tutorial I did on the Amstrad CPC, because ironically, the BBC and the Amstrad use basically the same chip to define the graphics. And so the functionality is actually very similar. Now, what I've written is a little example code program that will allow us to change each of those registers and see, roughly speaking, what the effect is on the screen. I say roughly speaking because we are going to be a little bit reliant on the accuracy of the emulator. So some of the stuff you see happen might not totally be representative of the real hardware because I think the emulator that I'm using for the BBC doesn't 100% emulate things. So some things that work on the emulator might be out of range for the real hardware, but we'll at least get an idea of how things work. Now, the CRTC chip basically affects the way that the memory within our system is displayed on the screen. It defines the shape of the screen, so to speak, and it also defines things like the height of the characters and things. And if we give it the correct values, we will get a normal display. And you can see I've put sort of the standard values for the screen up here. Um, and its description of the function. But if we give it um, the wrong values, we'll end up with a screen that's no good. However, there are special cases where we can give it sort of altered values that aren't the normal ones, but are perfectly valid. And this can allow us to make our screen smaller, which will save some memory and also make a screen that will be faster because it takes less bytes, which is great if you need a scrolling game with software scrolling. We can do things like hardware scrolling by manipulating the screen. And on the Amstrad CPC, you've got people doing clever things with split screen or what's known as RVI, where they um, actually change the screen size and manipulate the hardware to do things like that very clever Vespertino game are doing now. So um, as I say, this is a, a, an advanced topic, but it's a very clever one. But even if we're just really starting out and we aren't too smart on all this thing and want to keep things simple, as I say, we can shrink our screen to save ourselves some memory. Because if we want to use a 256 by 192 spectrum star screen, let's shrink that thing down, get it centralized and save ourselves a little bit of BBC memory that we can use for something else later. So that's the concept. Now let's just quickly go over all of the registers that are available to us. Now the first one is register zero, horizontal total, which is the physical width of the screen. Horizontal displayed is the logical width and that's in characters. So that's how much of the screen actually has data on it. And then there's the sync position, which effectively defines the actual position of the screen. We'll see all this later in more detail. We've then got the, the horizontal and vertical sync widths. This is relating to how the screen redraws. There's, a, there's an off-screen area. We will actually see this just later on, you see. just This is the off-screen area that defines where the screen ends and starts as the, um, the beam is redrawing the screen. And if you mess with that, you might get some undesirable effects. And this might be also where the emulator isn't necessarily emulating things uh, to the extent we need. We've then got a vertical total, which is the physical height of the screen a vertical adjust, which is a scanline offset. I don't think you're going to need that. We've got the vertical displayed, which is the logical height in characters. This is the height of the screen. So in this case, it's 20, 32, but we might want it to be 24 if we were emulating a spectrum. A vertical sync position, which is where the screen is vertically. Um, we've got interlay skew. This is something I don't think you're going to ever need. Maximum rad raster address. This is the number of lines per character. A lot of these commands are working in character blocks and I'm not sure this is something you might really want to change, but you can do some very clever tricks with it. If you take a look at my Amstrad CPC tutorial, I um, I did do a, a, a tutorial where I um, altered the line height to just two pixels and then I manipulated the screen address registers, every single line to build up an image from just a few bytes of memory. I'm not going to do it on the BBC because I don't know enough about the BBC, but it would assume be possible. So if you want to see that trick in action, please see my CPC tutorial on that. So as I say, that's something. Now the cursor start and end, I'm not sure if these are used. I, I don't use the cursor in my tutorial. They weren't used on the CPC. It was a software cursor. The display start address, this um, is the actual address of memory that is making up the screen. And we can use this for a vertical scroll in hardware if we wish. And also we can uh, do some things where we actually have split screen or where we, um, you know, we do, do page flipping and things if we want to. And then there's some other ones. I, I don't know if they're used. I, to my knowledge, they're not, but um, we won't be covering them anyway. So that's the concept of the register numbers. Now, if you think of your visible screen here that you can actually put data on, this is defined by the horizontal disp and the vertical disp. That's the size of it. 
the display position will be defined by the horizontal sync position and the vertical sync position. The, um, the blanking area, the area off screen, will be defined by the horizontal and vertical width registers here. And the memory address of the visible screen is defined by registers 12 and 13 here. Now, this is really just a um, sort of graphic to show it off. The best way to learn all of this, though, is to actually go over to the code. I thought it was best to sort of give a brief summary here, but actually, we've got this little toy that I've made. I, this is a direct conversion from the CPC version, and hopefully this version works just as fine for the BBC fans. So if I just put this on top here. Now, here's my screen here, and you can see we've got this um, this black area down here. Now, the way this function works is you can see here we've got a plus and a minus and we've got a set of letters here we've got a name of a register and we've got a register number and then we've got a value here in decimal and hexadecimal and if I use a pair of keys for example one and two here I will actually change the value of this register so one and two is h total qw is h disp and so on so if I press one here you can see this value is going down here now, unfortunately, I think this is actually one that's not emulated by the hardware. Picked a bad example here. So um, let's, unfortunately, the emulator isn't emulating that one. Horizontal displayed is definitely being emulated. You can see here, we're actually physically reducing the width of the screen here. But unfortunately, that's messing up our characters. Now, obviously, if we select invalid values or values that are just rather tricky to work with, we're going to struggle to see the actual setting screen. And so we've got this thing called safe mode. If I press space, that turns on safe mode and that will flip back to default values after each key press. So we can see the effect, but we can actually still see the settings to restore things. OK, so let's have a play and let's see if we can make our screen look a bit nicer. So if I reduce the vertical displayed here, you can see my screen is getting shorter here. So how tall do I want my screen to be? Well, I don't want to be too tall because I'm now seeing parts of possibly the ROM there. So we don't want it to be that big. Let's um, just make it really small, just like that. Let's save as much memory as we can. And then if we now change the sync position, I think it is. We can now move our screen down here. So you can see we can now centralize this really wide screen if we want. Now, if we change the horizontal total, of course, with Q and W, we can make our screen narrower. So we need to turn on the safe mode there. And then if we change the horizontal sync position, we can now actually center our screen. So that's now actually centered. Now, the problem, of course, is the graphics are all corrupt. Um, that's kind of the problem with this kind of thing is it's not just a case of reorganizing the screen we actually need to make sure our code is showing graphics accordingly so because the screen shape has changed my routines to calculate memory addresses don't work correctly anymore and would need to be reprogrammed I'm, I'm just trying to give an example though of how you can play with this and learn some new settings and then once you've got the settings probably write them down and then use those as a new initialization set for your game code now as I said before, the um, cursor ones, the height is quite interesting. Let's see it. There it is. I think it's you and I. Now you can see if we shrink them, our characters are reducing in the, their length. And as I said before, you can do some quite quirky things with this. Um, I don't think values over eight are much use. But as I say, you can actually shrink this and then you can create a larger screen and do weird manipulation. But you are going to have to be careful and make sure your emulator is very precise or you test on real hardware. Because if you're doing very, very crazy things like that, it just might not work on the real hardware. Anyway, though, hopefully um, this will give you some fun. Download this, have a play with it and to try some settings. And maybe you'll be able to work out how to create a screen, either maybe you want a spectrum size screen, maybe you want a really tall, thin game screen for a pinball machine or something, or a very wide screen for a sort of movie style feeling. But um, hopefully this will help you out. Now, once you've got your register values, you just need to know how to actually set the CRT registers. And it's very, very easy. All you do is you select a register with the port FE00, just store the value there. And then the new value for that register, FE01 will do that for you and the values are being shown here of course in decimal and hexadecimal so the register numbers here you would write to fe00 and the value either in decimal or hexadecimal here to fe01 and that will give you the effect that you got when you actually saw it in these settings here 
Okay, so that's really all I wanted to cover today. I just wanted to give you a brief introduction to this program, how you can have a play with it, and um, maybe you can figure some stuff out. Now, unfortunately, I'm not the biggest genius on the BBC. I don't know the full range of things that you can do with this. On the Amstrad, I've seen a lot of games that use this kind of trick, so I know what kind of things are possible. But on the BBC, I'm not as clued up, so um, hopefully, if you're a BBC fan, you'll have some more ideas of how far you can take this. But I hope it's given you some inspiration, and I hope this tool will be a bit of fun for you. Anyway, of course, please go to my website, download the source code, download the assembly, compilation scripts, the dev tools, and have a go. Uh, I hope you found this interesting. If you have, please like and subscribe because it helps out with the YouTube. Um, they rank you based on how many likes you have and things. Um, if you want as well, please join my forum on my website. I now own learnasm.net. If you go there, there's a forum and um, you can chat along and have some fun talking about retro stuff, talk about assembly, and I do little programming competitions for little prizes. So please join along there. Anyway, whatever you decide to do, I hope you enjoy programming the BBC and assembly in general. Thanks for watching today and goodbye.